mama to be, let's talk about postpartum today. I'm going to share my tips for how to survive postpartum, what I'm doing differently with this second baby. About two years ago, I was postpartum with my first kid and I learned a lot. It's the kind of thing that you can't really understand unless you've been through it before, but whether you're a first time parent or a second time, third time parent, just looking for some focused ideas of the essentials for postpartum, that's what I hope this video does for you today. To keep it simple and to keep us focused on what really matters, I'm going to share three things I'm going to keep in my postpartum plan and three new things I'm going to start with my postpartum with this second baby. It should always be said that every person's experience is different, but my postpartum with my first child was pretty extreme. I was used to having a very independent lifestyle, bouncing around the city, doing my work, and then all of a sudden was handed a newborn. I knew this was a coming, obviously I felt prepared, I thought I knew what to expect, but postpartum threw me for a loop. However, there are ways to set yourself up for success. Three things I'm gonna keep in my postpartum plan with the second baby. One is the focus on getting my own shower. Last time, I kind of fell into this naturally and I absolutely want to keep it this time around. I really valued cleaning myself, getting a fresh shower, feeling like my body was taken care of. Postpartum can be kind of messy. You're healing, uh, you're bleeding for many weeks. You're also, if you're trying to nurse or pump, you have things going on up top. Regardless of how you're feeding baby, baby might be spitting up on you. And generally you can feel a little bit sluggish or sticky because it's a lot of being up through the night and sitting around and taking care of diapers. So it can feel a little messy and dirty. Because of this, I'm absolutely gonna keep my focus on taking a shower every day. Maybe you'll miss a day here and there, but my goal is to shower every day. Even if it's a body rinse off, I'm not gonna wash my hair every day. I do not do, I wash my hair maybe twice a week, but step in that shower and take care of myself. Take a little break every day. The second thing I'm going to keep from my last postpartum experience is getting help with dinner. Breakfast and lunch can be more casual for me, but I really valued and appreciated a nice, warm, nutritious, uh, full dinner. This is an awesome thing to pass off to someone else in your life, whether it's friends who wanna help, family that starts to visit, a significant other who lives with you, neighbors, you name it. If someone wants to help, if someone is there to help, the first thing I pass off is, can you figure out dinner for tonight? And the more warming, the more nourishing, the more fulfilling the dinner feels to you, the better. But absolutely, I really valued that last time and I'm definitely gonna keep it at the forefront for the first couple months of postpartum is someone else taking care of, making sure there's a nourishing dinner on the table every night. The third and final thing I'm gonna keep from my last postpartum experience and prioritize is the mentality that my maternity leave is a gift. Last time I kind of struggled with the feeling of not being productive, the feeling of stepping away from work. I run my own small business. I have a lot of responsibilities and I felt tension with not working. But also in those early postpartum months, it's incredibly hard to feel like you can get anything done. So in that kind of tension of struggling as a working mom to be on maternity leave, I started telling myself, this maternity leave is a gift. It's permission to focus on baby. They will figure it out. I will go back to work, but these weeks that I have to just focus on the baby and myself are a gift. Not everyone gets maternity leave. It's a big conversation, especially in the United States. So I really kept the mantra of my maternity leave is a gift. I don't need to be productive. I don't need to be on email. I need to just focus on baby and get well for these next couple of months. That will be very helpful for any of you who are first time parents preparing for postpartum. You might feel some of that tension. Like I was excited to go into my maternity leave. It felt like, oh, it's gonna be a break from work. But then when I was in my leave, after about two weeks, I, I was craving the feeling of being productive or I was worried about maybe something that was being left, left behind at work. 
And anyway, if you at all, at all feel that tension of, I want to get back to work or I'm not productive, I'm not doing anything, maternity leave is a gift if you have it. Okay, let's move on to three things I'm going to start. Three things that are going to be new with this second baby. They're all kind of based on things that I somewhat struggled with the first time around. So I've learned from that and I'm going to add new, a few essentials this time. One of them is I'm also going to make it a goal to nap once in the day. It's a common phrase, common piece of advice to nap or sleep when the baby's sleeping. I didn't really jive with that. I found it very hard to nap every time the baby was sleeping. I wanted to do other things. I wanted to watch a TV show. I wanted to take my shower. I wanted to have my lunch. I wanted to talk with the person who was visiting us. It was never easy for me to just nap when the baby napped. So instead of that mantra and like not keeping up with sleeping when the baby's sleeping, I'm going to have it be my goal to just nap once a day. It's almost like going to be on my to-do list. It's like, have I napped today? During postpartum, it's pretty easy to take a nap and be tired at any point during the day. So this doesn't have to be very planned out for me. I can take a quick cat nap when the baby takes their nap and just make sure I'm checking that box once a day. There might be days where I nap more than once and that would be great, but I'm gonna keep the goal small and attainable so that I actually do it this time. Second is I'm gonna make it a daily goal to either go on a walk or dance or walk up and down the stairs for about 15 or 20 minutes every day. I actually wrote down in my postpartum plan, walk or dance for 20 minutes a day. This is new because it wasn't really a daily focus of mine. I felt like I was very low energy my first time um, postpartum, but I think it's gonna be very, very good to set an attainable goal the second time that doesn't require that I go outside. The walk would be outside, fresh air, that's great, but some days I didn't even have the energy to go out. We live in the city, we live in an apartment building right now. Getting out the door with an absolute newborn and your healing body can feel very intense. I'm also due when it's cold outside. So that cold weather is another reason to wanna to stay inside. So I've added the option to dance to music as my movement for the day. And that can be slow, it can be very joyful, it might feel silly the first few times, but it's something I do with my toddler. She loves to put on music and dance in the family room. So I'm gonna make it my goal to do one of those things every day. If you are interested in this kind of thing, just make it your goal or name a few types of movements that you wanna do every day. It might be yoga, it might be stretching, it might be, you name it, an at-home workout you like, but make sure that there's not only the pressure to like get out every day, but something that you can very easily do at home instantly. Regardless what it looks like for you, I'm gonna start by trying to be in movement for 20 minutes every day. The third and final thing I'm adding to my postpartum plan has actually already begun. So in my third trimester, I began this one and I'm gonna continue it in my postpartum. And that is talking to a talk therapist. So I've been going to therapy every other week for the past few weeks and I'm gonna continue that even once baby's here to help me navigate the changes, the emotions, the transition, maybe some anxiety or just big feelings that come up. My first time around, I did do talk therapy, but I didn't do it from the get-go. I waited until I had my OB appointment and I was talking about what was going on. I was talking about how emotionally exhausting everything felt. And I was talking about like just the change, the life change. I had so many thoughts. I was kind of offloading it on my OB a bit and crying. <laughs> And my OB quickly said a lot of new parents, a lot of new moms, enjoy some talk therapy in the postpartum period of life. This feels kind of vulnerable to talk about, but the reason I'm putting it out there on the internet is because I never heard someone say that, and it totally changed the game for me. When I was postpartum, and everyone who is postpartum is going through changes, is going through emotions, your hormones all over the place, you feel like you don't know what you're doing, you're not sleeping, and it's just a very um, kind of 
different time where everything is up in the air and it's not really like a settled feeling. It wasn't for me. Talk therapy gave me a place to work through some of these thoughts, to get some advice on how to navigate things, to just feel heard, feel understood, and to feel not crazy. If you're at all interested in this, there are therapists that focus on postpartum, new motherhood, parenthood, anxiety, whatever you're feeling, there is a talk therapist that is available to you. The way I would go about it and the way I did go about it to find this therapist is I went on the Psychology Today website. I filtered by my insurance and then I found someone that accepted my insurance and specialized in the things I wanted to get help on. That is my focused list of things that I hope will help you. Three things I'm keeping in my postpartum plan and three things I'm adding that are new. I hope one of these feels exciting to you. One of them you're gonna try on your own. Please do let me know in the comments which one or more you're going to try because I'd love to hear what is resonating with you all. And I wish you well in your postpartum. You're not just gonna survive it, you might thrive in it. But these little tips are the kinds of things that can make a big difference even if they feel small right now. Have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you in my next video.